Let's open again to Matthew, and we're going to look at chapter 25 and verse 13 before we get to chapter 24 this evening. Because one of the greatest dangers in studying biblical prophecy is the folly of date setting. And even though we know that, it is the constant danger that occurs and has occurred. In fact, I want to chronicle tonight a thousand years of date setters. In fact, you'll be surprised when you learn some of them. The unbiblical conclusions that come from studying biblical prophecy and that constant danger ever since Jesus preached this sermon on the side of the Mount of Olives, the Olivet Discourse, chapter 24, rolling into his continuing applications of it in 25, has been that as we look at the stirring events of the future, Jesus tells us not what is going to happen, what may happen, but he actually sees it happening. Now, you, you might not have caught what I said. Jesus doesn't say this will happen. Jesus describes, Paul describes, John describes the events as they're happening. See, there, there's something amazing about biblical prophecy that it is unfolding as you read it. You actually see the events as they're occurring and only God, the God of heaven and earth, can record not prediction of what might happen, what may happen, what, what possibly could happen, but actually through the eyes of Christ and his apostles, we can look through and see the literal events as they unfold. Because of that perspective, not being predictions of what may happen, but what actually happens. Jesus warned this. And look at verse 13 of Matthew 25. He said, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Jesus said, You can't know the day or the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. What does that mean? It doesn't mean we pick a day in some month or year and start thinking that's when Christ is coming because that is the folly he warned against. If we look at history, some of the greatest saints made the mistake of date setting, as in Martin Luther. Martin Luther predicted when Christ would return. John Wesley also gave a year. He said Jesus will come in this year. Isaac Newton probably is one of the most well-known. He wrote 40 500, I mean, you know, as in Isaac, uh, apple-dropping gravity man, Newton, one of the greatest Christian scientists of all time, spent a majority of his life writing 4,500 meticulous, carefully calculated pages of mathematics taken from the Scriptures, and he predicted that Jesus Christ would come back to earth in the year 2060. Well, we've got some time to go. He picked, you know, hundreds of years in the future. But isn't it interesting that throughout history, person after person after person, great Bible teachers, and not only these men, Luther and Wesley and Newton, but a host of others have succumbed to date setting at dramatic times in history. And I'll describe some of those. Um, an untold number of people outside of these famous ones have tried to predict the Lord's return. Most of them use elaborate timetables. What they do is they find some number in the scripture, and if you divide it and multiply it and count out from something, it's going to make the exact time. But most date setters do not realize that mankind has not kept an unwavering record of time. In fact, if you want to chart, for example, from the year 100 B.C. to today, I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's just from the lifetime of, of just before Julius Caesar up through today. And I mean, that seems like pretty, pretty fair history. But just to cover those 2,100 years, you would have to contend with the fact that 46 B.C., 46 years before Christ, while King Herod was around, in that time period, the, the year 46 was 445 days long. They added 80 days that year because their calendars had gotten so out of whack. Then there was no year zero, and in 1582 we switched from the Julian years, 360-day years, to the Gregorian 365-day years. So in, in 1582 they went from what we call the biblical lunar calendar of 360-day years, and they 
went up to the Gregorian more 365 and a quarter day, you know, the leap year calendar like we have now. And so that makes any kind of calendar have all kinds of deficiencies if you think that you can just calculate backward from our time. And because most prognosticators are not aware of these errors, their math is instantly off by several years if they haven't calculated those things in. Well, as they're concerned with the date of Jesus' return, they miss the fact that we are not to be so concerned about the date of his return as we are to be being those who follow his commandments of how we're supposed to live. They spend all their time, these prognosticators, in trying to find out the exact date instead of trying to live like he said we're to live as we await his return.